All right, this little video clip is going to be about pins in double shear. Now, this is one of the first things that uh, students learn in strength of materials, and it's sometimes a little confusing. So what I've decided to do, rather than start with numbers, I'm going to start with a physical example. I've got two little blocks here. One fits inside the other. I've cut them that way. This one has got a hole through it, and it's got this, what's basically the end of a clevis, but it's got these two little flanges coming up, whatever you call those, and a uh, hole through it. This one is a single part with a matching hole. When I want to assemble it, go like that, stick my pin through it. This is just a wooden dowel, and I've got the end tapered to make it easy to assemble. And there you go. This is a pin in double shear. I'm going to pull like that, and I'm not pulling very hard. Say I'm making 50 newtons, okay, right there. Well, there's two shear planes on this pin, one at the intersection of this part and this section, the other one at this part and this section over here. If there's 50 newtons pulling down and 50 newtons pulling up, then across each of those shear planes, there's a shear force of 25 newtons. When you put a pin in double shear, you cut the stress in two. Now I can kind of show you what will happen in single shear. There it is. The uh, pin is connecting there, the center piece, to that side, but not this side. And you can see as I move this up and down, that pin moves up and down. There's an ele it's, it's in bending more than it had been before. And also, there's only one shear plane. So the shear force across this pin is now 50 newtons, not 25 newtons. And if it were to plastically deform in there, I probably couldn't get it out. It would be stuck in there. So there. The pin's no longer in bending. It's only in shear there and there. This is a much cleaner arrangement. Also, when I, when I put it in single shear, the force is off-center. These two parts here and here the, the don't want to line up anymore. The axis uh, won't be straight once they're loaded. This part is now in bending, and it hadn't been before. So let me put the pin back. There you go. So now there's no bending. I have a, a true pin joint, and the forces act down the center of the linkage here. So that's a good thing. So let's do a numerical example. Let's take something like what I just showed you. There we go. And let's, let's make the forces a lot bigger. Let's say it's 10,000 newtons. Here's the center strap. That's also got 10,000 newtons acting on it. If not, if those two forces aren't equal and opposite, then this part isn't in static equilibrium. We want it to be in static equilibrium, so these two have to be the same. And let's put a pin through there. This is a cross section. So there's my pin. Okay, we assume that's a circular pin. All right, I have two. Uh, shear planes just like I had before, one right there and one right there. There's going to be a 5,000 newton force acting across each of those shear planes. So let's draw the free body diagram of just the pin. Okay, let's see if I can draw this in uh, quasi 3D. Okay, shear plane number one, shear plane number two. The force up is 10,000 newtons. The force down is 10,000 newtons, but it's divided up into two separate forces of 5,000 newtons each. Therefore, the shear stress acting across that plane is 5,000 newtons. I'm sorry, the shear force acting across that plane is 5,000 newtons. The shear force acting across that plane is 5,000 newtons. Once you get to this part, figuring out the shear stresses is pretty easy. This is the, the, the conceptual part right here. If you get this right, you're in good shape. Okay. So the expression for shear stress is very simple. It's shear force over area. Well, we already know that's 5,000 newtons. And area is pi r squared, or sometimes it's more convenient to say pi over 4 times diameter squared. I'm going to do that. They're mathematically equivalent, so it doesn't matter. It's d squared, so that's 10 millimeters squared. Okay. Again, I've, I've, told, I've mentioned this in some of the other videos, but always track your units as you go through a problem. 
if you get your units right, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. If you don't get the units right, it's time to stop and go back and check to see where you made a mistake. Because if the units come out wrong, the numbers are probably going to come out wrong. If you don't track units, you're giving up a valuable tool for checking your answer while you work. Okay, so this is 5,000 newtons, and the area is 78.540 millimeters squared. Newtons per millimeter squared is going to come out in megapascals because a millimeter squared is one millionth of a meter squared. So if you calculate that, I'm looking at my computer screen over here where I have all the numbers cranked out. It's 63.662 megapascals. And that's high, but not high enough to be uh, exceed the shear strength of a wide variety of materials, including fairly low-grade steel. If you uh, want to do this in English units, that answer turns out to be 9,233 pounds per square inch. All right, I've got one last thing to show you here, and I'm just going to hold this up to the camera. I think it can uh, zoom in on its own. This is a pin that's failed in double shear. This was given to me by a member of the faculty here. And if you can see right about there, as I rotate this, it's pretty obvious where the center strap and the edge straps were. This is a, a bolt failing in almost pure shear. There's a little bit of bend to it. The axis isn't straight anymore. But it's very, very obvious right here. And let's see, right there. You can see where the, exactly where the shear planes were. And you can see exactly how it failed. There you go.